Bonjour mes belles, comment allez-vous? Aujourd'hui, je suis, je suis très contente parce que I don't know if I need to start like a Grail series now or something, but <laughs> don't be surprised if you see a playlist like that soon, okay? Because I'm, my mind is blown right now. So I think it's time for us to have a little bit of doll therapy. It's not just me. I know this. Some of you guys just want to lay back and look at dolls just to relax. I totally get it because I feel the same way. So this is a great time for you to do that. Pull your dolls out with me while we have this discussion. Or just live vicariously through my dolls. It's all good. I do it too, guys. I do it too. <laughs> Okay, so my name's Gypsy, if you're new to this channel. I'm your host for most of the videos here. And today we're gonna be doing a little bit of exploring. I'm gonna do some body swaps. I just wanted to share with you guys this insane experience that I have been able to have initially with this guy who was my grail male Barbie doll for the longest. I finally acquired him. I actually put him onto a Superman body, which has made to move joints. I swapped out those ugly hands that were in balled up fists and replaced them with some hands from a, a Captain Kirk Star Trek body that I used as a donor. It's the same skin tone for him, so it worked. I don't like this bulky body on him. He just doesn't look right this brolic, I guess. <laughs> so. I'm gonna put him back onto his original body. There are no made to move bodies that I know of at this time that will match this Ken's skin tone, which is literally just a regular plain Barbie skin tone, whatever the regular default skin tone is. I don't really have a choice at this point but to keep him on some other type of articulated body. And the one he came with was already articulated. But look who I have here. So I'm having this mind blowing experience this past month of acquiring many of the dolls that are on my current grail list and for those of you who are new to dolling i'll just quickly explain that the holy grail list of dolls for most collectors are whatever they personally desire as dolls that they want to add to their collection but don't have yet and for whatever reason they are not able to easily acquire these dolls because maybe they are very rare maybe they're discontinued maybe they're extremely expensive or whatever, they're not available in their you know state or their country or something. It's just hard to get a hold of those dolls, but they're on your wish list of dolls that you really wanna to add to your collection if you ever got the chance. So that is what these dolls are for me, starting with the Johnny Depp head sculpt, Captain Jack Sparrow doll, which I did a box opening of. If you guys wanna go ahead and check out that vlog and see his details. And the same for this Poppy Parker back here who is, Poppy Parker in general, she's just always on my grill list <laughs> at all times. She's just always, I'm, I don't think I'll ever feel like I have one that's enough. I don't think I'll ever feel that way about Poppy. I feel like any other version of her that I can acquire throughout the rest of my life, I will appreciate just as if she was a brand new, the only grail doll in my collection. You know what I'm saying? Like Poppy just has a very special place in my heart. She's my favorite doll sculpt of all time. So I have this black Poppy Parker, which was like super high on my list. And I also have a Polynesian Poppy Parker as well, who's not over here right now because I have her over in my, um, on my little stand that I have made, my little display that I made some of my favorite dolls over there. So she's hanging out over there. And I also was able to acquire Dolls of the World Princess of Korea doll. And um, I haven't unboxed her just yet because I have some other things I wanna do with her before I take her out of the box. But she's like, she's the only doll I've been able to handle being in the box for this long, but only because the doll itself is not my grail. It's really the whole concept of the doll. The look, the hairstyle, the outfit, everything all together is what I had on like my list of dolls that I wanted to add. Like a very genuinely Korean, traditional Korean style looking doll. So I was able to kind of duplicate this look with Wailani when I customized her hairstyle and... Um, I found an outfit for her, like a hanbok outfit for her, but it's not like the princess version. It's just a regular hanbok. This guy who has been at the same level of 
priority on my grill list as the Johnny Depp doll. And I freaking love this Ken so much. I have been wanting to, this Ken since I knew he existed a few years ago. The whole story behind how I acquired him is like such a long depressing story that I don't even want to get into you guys. But, <laughs> but it was worth it for me to finally have him here. And I tell you guys all the time, Law of Attraction really does work. It yeah, so I wanted to share this experience with you guys. I did not get him new in the box. Basically just is on his regular body that he came with, which is not articulated in the least bit. He's got on the outfit that was supposed to come with this doll. And I actually did not purchase him dressed like this. He Everything was separate. Um, the clothing and the doll itself ultimately i feel like i ended up paying way too much <laughs> for the doll but that's okay because i don't regret it i i know that this is a doll i would have been really disappointed if i had not been able to acquire him when i actually had the opportunity to do it so i'm not upset about that it's okay and even though he's supposed to be like dolls of the world japan like a samurai or whatever i don't really think that this outfit is accurate to samurai period clothing it's just I feel like it's just based on that, like it's influenced by that, but it's not really authentic. Even the female version that comes as a, his like partner, you can buy her separately. The outfit she's wearing does not to me look very authentic as far as like Japanese traditional style clothes. I think she's wearing like pants or something. I don't know. I've never seen this doll in person, but in the pictures, I feel like I've seen her wearing like pants. <laughs> I don't think that's quite right. I'm not Japanese, I'm Korean, but I know a little something something about some of the neighboring cultures and I don't recall seeing any fashions in our ancient, you know, clothing styles that resemble this look. Like a big long trench coat type of deal with some, what kind of pants these are supposed to be, like I don't know. And my son, he's into all this Asian fashion stuff too, but he didn't think that this looks familiar either. He said he thinks it's just based on um, a style that basically they adapted for this character. I don't know. This is just what we're thinking. It's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys tell me. Are there any of you guys familiar with Japanese culture or Japanese? Maybe you guys know better than I do. But anyway, so he comes with this sword and he has no articulation, but his body sculpt itself just looks very like broad. He looks kind of bulky. So I thought it would be cool to try this Superman body on him. His skin tone initially when I was looking at pictures of him, I was convinced that he's the same skin tone as my BMR guy here with the warrior shirt on. And I thought that he was as light as this guy is, but he's really not. This dude is very pale compared to him and he is more of like a natural um, beige skin tone like a regular Ken or Barbie is. So these two actually have the same skin color, which works out fine. We're going to try this out. We're going to swap these guys heads. I'm going to put his head on this body. I'm going to put his head back onto his original body. So Huck here is actually borrowing his real body. So we're going to swap him back onto this body and then Huck will get this body, which is Captain Kirk's body, but I do have the fists on this body because I moved it off of the Superman body. Look at how long his hair is, you guys. What? Just so much freaking hair. Both of these guys have super long hair and they're different colors. So that's a lot of fun. I really love this guy though. He reminds me a lot for some reason of my grandfather on my mom's side. And, um, he just, I don't know, he reminds me of him from when he was younger. For some reason, I'm gonna see if I can find a picture of him so we can do a comparison. Y'all can tell me if you think you see the resemblance. What do you think? I mean, I don't know, maybe it's the expression. And if you look very closely, you'll see that his eyebrows are, like, furrowed right in the front there. There's these little wrinkles right in his forehead. Can you make that out? That's in the head sculpt itself. It's in the vinyl, you guys. The texture of those wrinkles on his forehead. And he's got these high cheekbones. He's not smiling. He doesn't look like completely like he's pissed, but he just has a very serious type of expression on his face, which I love. Love the level of detail they put into the sculpt. And then after him, I don't recall seeing the sculpt on any other male 
fashion dolls by Barbie. Did they ever reuse the sculpt? And since this was the first one they used it on, I'm gonna guess maybe the sculpt's name is like Japan or something? I don't know, is that racist? <laughs> I have no idea if they gave him a name because they just called him Japan Ken Samurai. So like, I don't know. What this sculpt is amazing. I love the sculpt. It's very beautiful. And I wish that they would reuse the sculpt on more dolls if they haven't since this guy. I like, Mattel, stop sleeping on your super awesome sculpts that you guys have that you just, you just let them go to waste. Come on. Okay, well, his head popped off pretty easily. And now I've got him on that superman body which i don't think looks bad on him i think he looks better with this body than my johnny depp doll did it's more believable on him i think of course this outfit that he's wearing i don't know what this outfit on him right now but we'll we'll get we'll get it together i do want to try on his clothes though on this body to see if it's even like can he even get away with it at all <laughs> to see if it'll fit so let's see okay before i try the clothes on him i just want to show you guys how this the body actually looks with the head and the color match is perfect the head and the body are exactly the same shade it works perfectly if it doesn't look quite the same on camera it's just the lighting in my room right now but to the naked eye yes they match perfectly there's like no information about this ken anywhere online that i've seen so this is part of the reason why i decided i was gonna do this vlog just in case anybody's out there like me that's just lusting after this dude and they're trying to justify if it's going to be worth it to spend probably over a hundred dollars on this doll in mint condition with the box maybe even two hundred dollars so if you know i would want to know like what kind of customizing can i do with this doll if i was going to make that type of a purchase for this guy because i'm telling you at this point it wouldn't even make sense to buy a doll like this unless he really was on your grail list it's the only way to justify this and this doll has a lot of meaning to me just because he reminds me so much of my grandfather who i can never talk to or see again because he died some years ago so last time i saw my grandfather i was like a teenager on a visit to south korea and that's the last time i saw him so you know it means a lot to me to be able to have a doll that reminds me of him even though he doesn't look exactly like him but just his expression his whole like his whole demeanor, just everything about this doll, the vibe of the doll, reminds me a lot of my grandfather. So I love that. I think he looks really good on this body. And I'm not even really a fan of the Superman body like that. So, you know, I'm not exaggerating here, guys. As far as the hands are concerned, though, I really don't recommend doing what I did with the, the doll's hand to replace it. But I have such a pet peeve about those balled up fists. I can't take it. Like, I cannot stand looking at it. It's like the teeth thing for me. Like, it's a, like a huge pet peeve of mine. So, I had to replace the hands. I didn't really care if I was going to end up damaging the doll. I just needed to try it. So, I did do it. But, it's not a very uh, permanent type of a swap. Like, I had to pin this hand into the hole. Because the way that it was popped off, it didn't quite connect properly. So, it looks good. And that's really all I'm worried about. So, my poor Ken. <laughs> You guys, it's not gonna happen. Alright, I cannot, I can't fit this thing on him. Do you know how narrow these arms are? And the body he was on was already kind of bulky. But these arms are way too freaking muscular. Like, they go up to about right here. And then they can't go up any further. So, let me not even play myself and try to force this stuff on him. And have it rip. Because ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, so his outfit is a no-go on this body. However, I'm not actually upset about that because it can still fit on a different doll's body if i want to use it for something but i'm not that interested in the outfit anyway i just want to see if you can get away with it but he so can't all right and then this guy i'm gonna put his beautiful face back onto his original body his head just pops on and off real easily and he's good to go again i named my jack sparrow doll amadeus after the musician motes art put huck back onto this Captain Kirk body. Get your big old head in there. Goodness. I'm giving you a hard time. I think it's on right. This is how I keep track of their names, you guys, for my characters. Yeah, so these guys are now on these two bodies. I think they look pretty good. I'm gonna get them dressed one more time. Now, you see, I'm trying to try this jacket on Dungeon who is an Integrity Toys doll, and he's pretty skinny, but it's not fitting over his arms either. So he's also too muscular. That's crazy. 
for those um, for the sleeves on that jacket. And but the pants do fit. This is how they look like a little flap, and it's got clouds and stuff on it. The pants actually stop right there, and the boots just go over it like that. And these boots fit on him because Ontario Toys guys normally have the same size feet as Barbie guys do. He can wear the stuff on the bottom half of the body, but not on the top. That's yes, success, finally. Okay, so this guy is a BMR doll with a made to move regular style body. It's not bulky or whatever. And he can fit the top, he can fit the bottom, he can fit everything. So this is good, this is very good. All right, so that lets me know that if I do happen to find a made to move body in the future that has the same skin tone that I need, I can put him onto one of these bodies and then he can fit back into his outfit again. For me, it doesn't look so much like a samurai outfit than it does kind of like a vampire outfit. Like, I mean, is it just me? This coat kind of looks to me like something Dracula would wear. <laughs> It doesn't help that this guy is so pale to begin with. So he's like really, really like got this vampire type look. So but. this piece that goes around the waist, it's just like a strap, like a belt. And you just hook it up in the back there. It just stays open like this. It's not, it doesn't close up. If you're wondering, he's actually on one of my homemade stands. That this was like one of my first ones that I just did as a prototype. It's not completely the way I want it so that's why I haven't made this tutorial yet because there's still like one little tweak I need to make before I can show you guys what I did but I have a couple of these that I've been using for some of my dolls it's doing the trick for me okay I have my two grail boys redressed I had to really get creative trying to find stuff to fit this bulky body that my Japan Ken is on right now. Goodness, it's hard to redress in you guys because, you know, the Superman bodies, they're very muscular. Their legs are a lot more thick than the average Barbie dolls. Even the Kens with articulation, they don't have this much bulk in their lower body. So he's basically just wearing some stretchy, like, sweatpants. And I mean, are the feet on these bodies bigger too? Because... Look at how these um, sandals are fitting him. Like his foot can't even go all the way into them. I thought they were the same size because all the other shoes that I have for these guys seem to be interchangeable, but I don't know. I'm not sure. It's not a big deal. These guys are actually wearing the same graphic on their shirts, I just realized. But there's like two different versions, I guess. It's the same graphic, but this one is like the revised version, the newer version. Those graphics are done by Genu. My son draws and he's been developing designs for our channel for a little while now. So he's been uploading onto our merch shop all the different designs that are available. For human clothes, we can wear these designs on our own clothes. And Gino's also working out a way to get you guys some of these graphics onto doll clothes so we can match the dolls. So be sure to check out our merch shop just to browse and see what we have available over there if you guys want some ideas for things that's going to be coming up soon in our dolly scale clothes as well. Probably most of them are going to be like one of a kind or very limited edition because Gino's drawing everything by hand. So they are going to be very small quantities of clothes available for the dolls with those graphics on them. You can definitely get as many as you want over on the merch shop. Anyway, let's talk about accessories. This guy didn't really come with many accessories except for his sword, which is right here. And it's just, it's plastic and then it's painted silver and black. It's cool looking, but I have no use for this. I'll probably just give it to my daughter to play with. He has gel in this part of his hair, which I plan to wash out. This part of his hair, there's like very slight gel in there, a little bit. See in the back here, you can see that it's actually been tied up in like a loose bun type of deal. But there's gel in this part of his hair, so I have to wash that out. But his hair looks very well rooted, a lot of hair to work with if you're into customizing or if you want to cut the hair, whatever. And if you look close, he actually has a widow's peak that is drawn onto his head which i don't know i feel like in the pictures the promo pictures i don't know if i saw the hairline looking like that i feel like i thought it was rooted all the way up to that part there because you can tell he has a widow's peak in the pictures i remember it being actual hair rooted up there but it doesn't look bad though it's actually more noticeable on camera than it is in person but it blends right into the rest of his hair but i can't get over how good his face looks i think his face is so much like 
bone structure in it. The sculpt itself is very, very good. His facial hair is actually very lightly painted on. I feel like I'm not sure yet. I think I might want to erase it and see how he looks without any facial hair. I think I'm just curious about what his actual, like the pure sculpt looks like. And my Johnny Depp guy here has facial hair too. But because he has his hair coming out of his goatee that's rooted, I think I'm gonna leave his face alone because I like that the hair just kind of blends all in together. For his face, I'm okay with the facial hair, but on this guy, I just, I don't know for sure yet. I'll probably try to erase it to see what it looks like. If I don't like the way he looks after I erase it, then I will just draw it back on because I can make the facial hair look very similar to what it already was. Whatever I end up doing to him, I'll be sure to uh, record it so you guys can see how he turned out. But I mean, his face up alone is just so simple. The simplicity, it still works on him somehow. I don't know how to explain it. Like if you look closely, his eyes are actually two different sizes. One is a little more squinty than the other one. It, I feel like it makes him look more expressive, even with one of his eyes being a different size from the other one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if it's noticeable. It is to me, but I don't mind it. I'm so happy to have him. You guys, I really now, I feel like I can just die happy. So for those of you who missed it, go and check out my 2021 Broken Dolly New Year's Challenge video. I tagged a bunch of people, including any of you guys who are watching, for the New Year's Challenge and basically tell us what your goals are for your doll collection or your doll tube account coming in the next year what you guys want to accomplish and one of the things that i had put on my list of goals was to acquire my male grail barbie doll and i have been able to do that so i have both of these guys now and a special thanks to my husband adonis who got them for me <laughs> of course so yeah i guess if you marry somebody who takes your doll collection hobby seriously then <laughs> maybe they can help you acquire all your goals who knows right <laughs> work together both of them articulated at least to this level for right now and hopefully i'll be able to upgrade them even more later on down the line it's just an exciting feeling to see your your dreams manifest in front of you if any of you guys are wondering this is what his original body sculpt looks like he came on it's like a model muse kind of a body for the boys and it's not very um it doesn't feel like it's a hollow body it has some weight to it it feels very sturdy and weighted which i like so it's a good looking body if you just you know want to keep him on the body that he comes with just to pose if you decide you want to keep him in his original outfit and all that i'm not the kind of collector who keeps my dolls in their original conditions almost every single one of them i take out of the box almost 99.9% .9 of the time i remove all of their original clothing and i change them out of what they came in i really i can't think of one doll that i own that i've kept in its original condition even like some of my really high-end dolls they all have been altered in some way as far as like you know whether they're in their mint condition I, do, I just don't do that and that's what I like to do I like to enjoy my dolls I want to customize them I want to personalize them I want to have them reflect the story I have in my mind for them I use them to kind of self-soothe when I'm stressed so I like the ability of being creative with them and just switching things up when I get bored with things it makes me feel like free and creative and just so I can express myself the way I'm feeling. There's no wrong way, there's no right way. It's whatever you want to do, right? Some people, I think they do it both ways. Some of them will get like more than one of the dolls that they like and then they'll keep one in the box, they'll keep one out of the box. Like it's just, it's your preference. Whatever you can afford to do, whatever you like to do, right? Yeah. Drop it in the comments if you talk to your dolls. I do. <laughs> So what if I'm crazy? You need some crazy people in the world to spice things up. Sheesh, as long as you're not hurting nobody, you could be crazy. I gotta tell you guys a, a real story, like a crazy story. One of these days, I'm gonna tell you guys a story about this crazy freaking dude that I had to deal with. Oh my gosh. Some of you gonna laugh and some of you gonna be shocked, but it's, it's not a lie, okay? It's a real story. Anyway, so remind me in the comments to tell you guys this story eventually. Yo, and shout out the people who actually did post, make a post of their own versions of the 2021 New Year's Challenge. And I encourage those of you watching this now to go check it out and do that because it's a lot of fun and it's a cool way for us to interact with each other. Go and check out Seasonal Frostbite's channel because Kendra actually did her own um 
her own list for this challenge. I, she was one of the people that we tagged and she did hers right away. So the deadline is for the end of the month. And beyond that, of course, you guys can still go on and do the challenge and tag us in it. And we want to come and watch yours. But just the official deadline is the end of the month. If you haven't checked out Kendra's version yet, go over to Seasonal Frostbite's channel and go check it out. And then go to the people's channels that she tagged and leave them comments and tell them you want to see their list too. Hello. Um, and I do have some other tag coming up too for those of us that are trying to do these fun interactive things together let's see what we can do together this year 2021 year of the ox let's do some fun stuff let's do some different stuff let's revive our community of dolly lovers okay all right thanks so much for watching this video it's already been way too long and i am just geeking out over here like a freaking lunatic because i'm just a dork like that so happy to be adding more of my beautiful asian face sculpts to my doll collection i i can't have enough of them i already have a pretty good assortment of them so i'll show you guys what i already have so far and that's going to be a fun upcoming video as well as a couple tutorial ideas and some vlogs that i have coming for you guys i'll see you guys in the next one my name is gypsy thank you for watching have a dolly day she don't exist. i'm really not that person i'm disheveled